Hey, so good afternoon. So I'd like to just look at a few sort of variations on the stuff we've been doing. Um, the first sort of observation or variation I'd like to make is that if you have, you know, just one trig function and a bunch of numbers, like if you have something like this, then the material we did yesterday passes through. You have to solve for the trig function, and then you proceed as we did yesterday. So in this particular case, we end up, I guess it's kind of unfortunate to use a bar for two different things. Um, here it's a fraction bar, and we wind up with the sine of x is one third, and then we can proceed using the material of, well, the classes I usually teach run Monday to Thursday, so I'll never stop saying yesterday. But what, of course, I mean is uh, Wednesday, the stuff we looked at two days ago, where you'll use the arc sign to find one of these angles. Let's get the calculator up. And online students can also see that as we wait. Okay, let's try that again. The arc sine of one third gives us point three three nine eight. So if we round it, eh, we, we can keep four decimal places, point three three nine eight. And then we use reference angles. And when you use reference angles, there's always a decision to be made of the second, third, and fourth quadrant, which quadrant are we interested in? First is first is here. Oh, we've already the second. second. And that's because we're looking for places where the sign is positive. And in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant, the sign will be negative. So as for this angle in the second quadrant, how do I find it? Sorry, it's, no, it's, it's the okay. purse of small uh, size. Sign. And then for like sine x, but like the x would be the point three three nine eight. Mm-hmm. So 
as far as taking the sine of 0 0.3398, that's not quite what we're looking for. So maybe if I just label everything, it will become clearer. We want that angle theta. This angle here, is 0.3398. So how many, how many radians are there in a straight line? Close. Right, uh, right the second time. So there are pi radians in a straight line. Pi is broken up as this angle we're looking for, and 0.3398. So to, sub, to find the reference angle, or rather to, to find the angle theta, we use subtraction. To get 2.8018. And this is two solutions. And if we wanted the rest of them, because there are in fact infinitely many, we'd plus or minus the multiples of two pi. Now, I probably should say, um, in a lot of the textbook assignments, they're explicitly limiting what they're looking for. Like in a lot of the textbook assignments, you'll see the equation. And then the textbook will say, but we're only looking for angles between zero and two pi. And in that situation, you just do what we did, except that once we found these two angles, we're done. We don't add and subtract multiples of 2 pi to get the rest of the solutions. Now, requirements like this become a little more interesting, or maybe a little more difficult, if instead of having something like the sine of x equals a number, you have something like this. The sine of 2x equals 1 seventh. And this is kind of the, the classic um, problem of, of this material. And at, to start with, I won't put any restriction on x. So just that x be any real number, and we'll get an infinite number of solutions. And the thing of it is that we're basically not going to worry about the fact that we have 2x there until the very end. So... 
will once again use the arc sine of one seventh. This time, the arc sine of one seventh, and that gives us point one four three three. So once again, the sign is equal to a positive number. So just like in the last example, the only reference angle you're looking at is in the second quadrant. Let's see. If we can now, we struggled a little last problem. But now, if I want to know this angle in the second quadrant, how do I find it? Take pi minus 0.142. That is perfectly correct. Two point nine nine eight three. And only now do we say, well, we haven't solved for X. It's 2x whose sign is this. So what we now have is a 2x equals 0 0.1433. And 2x is 2.9983. And if we wanted all of the solutions, we'd plus or minus the multiples of two pi. So let's take these one by one. We haven't found x yet. We've solved for 2x. But you can you can probably imagine what our what our next step is going to be. Now, and having put you on the spot like that, what is our next step? going to be? Um, would you subtract 0.14? Or no, would you divide 2x to get x by itself? Yes. You, because we want to know what x is, we can divide by 2. And if you if you wanted to, you could simplify this. It happens to work nicely here because the two can cancel with the two in front of the pi n. And as for the 0 0.1433 divided by 2,
It's point zero seven one six five. And then you do the same thing with the other value, um, you'd take this, two point nine nine eight three. And you would divide by two again. Again, just because we had a two X, we end up with a bit of nice cancellation. 2.9983 divided by 2. One point four nine nine one five. So problems like this, um, it might seem like, you know, letting you have infinitely many solutions is going to make things harder to deal with. I would suggest that it's actually a bit more complicated if instead of something like this, You have that problem. With a restriction on X. Because having a restriction on X means that you're going to need some of the solutions, but not all of them. So instead of being able to just say, well, we have an infinite number of solutions and here they are, we need to look at these solutions and figure out, well, which ones do we want? Which ones do we not want? So let's repeat this process. And the first thing we're going to do, instead of asking, what, instead of knowing where x lives, x lives between zero and two pi, it's going to be convenient to know where two x is because the first thing we do is solve for 2x. We don't get x until the very last step. So when you have an inequality like this, you can multiply all of the pieces by a positive number, in this case 2, And we wind up with 2x being between 0 and 4 pi. So now, and I'm 
I hope it's okay. I, I'm re sort of reusing this so we don't have to show all of the steps again. We get 2x is 0.143 plus or minus 2 pi n, but not all of these solutions are valid anymore. We only want the solutions that are between zero and four pi. So the step we do here, where we use the arc sign to get this, and then um, special angles, I'm suddenly blanking on the name, reference angles to get that, this gives us all of the answers that are between zero and two pi. So if we subtract two pi from those, we get negative answers. Well, we certainly don't want negative answers. Zero is still our lower bound. So we don't want to subtract anything. What about addition? So this is an answer between zero and two pi. If we add two pi to it, we get an answer between two pi and four pi. Let me sort of jot down how this is working. We start with an answer between zero and two pi. We add two pi to it. And we get an answer between two pi and four pi. If If we added four pi to it, we'd get an answer between four pi and six pi, and so on. If we added six pi to it, we'd get an answer between six pi and eight pi, and so on. And now we just look and we say, well, what do we want? We're looking for answers between zero and four pi. So this is okay, and this is okay, but this isn't okay. We don't want that answer, it's too big. And this isn't okay. We don't want that answer, it's too big. And so on. So we wind up with two answers from two answers from this. So we've taken this infinite collection of answers and we've pruned it down to two. And then we do the same with 
We start with an answer between zero and two pi. Add two pi to it to get an answer between two pi and four pi, and that's okay. If we now kept going, we'd wind up with an answer between four pi and six pi, and that's too big. We don't want answers that are bigger than four pi. So we wind up with four answers here. And, and then we have to finish the problem. I mean, we've done the we've done the significant work, but our goal is to solve for x, and we haven't solved for x. We've solved for 2x. It can be 0 0.143 and 0 0.143 plus 2 pi and 2.9983 and 2.9983 plus two pi. And then rather exhaustingly, but we divide everything by two. So point one four three divided by two point zero seven one five. And honestly, it probably makes the most sense since we've got these decimals anyway, instead of um, getting this answer to have pi in it, it probably makes more sense to just take the entire thing and divide it by two to get a decimal, 3.213. Then 2.9983 over two, One point four nine nine one five yes, four nine nine one five is correct, and then one point. Four nine nine one five plus two pi all divided by two to get three point. Eight nine one 
And um, and two pi is six point something. So we do have answers that are between zero and two pi. Questions so far? I mean, I know that, you know, sitting in classrooms myself, what you really might want is to digest it for a bit. Um, so maybe we'll see Monday if you have questions. What if instead of two, we had a one half? or a one-third, or... something less than one. Well, now, Instead of that increasing the number of answers, it's going to decrease the number of answers. Because when you ask where one half X lives, oh, I guess it's actually not going to make a difference in this case. That's um, to illustrate what I'm trying to illustrate. Let's turn that into one fourth X. So one, so what was I writing in any event? Zero time is one fourth is zero. So x times a fourth is a fourth of x. Two pi times a fourth is pi divided by two. So this time, we look at the angles we get. We look at Point one four three three. And we look at two point nine nine eight three. And you see that never mind adding to a pi to get additional solutions, just these solutions we've written down, one of these is already too big. Because we're looking for values of one fourth x between zero and pi over two. And point two point nine nine eight three is not between zero and pi over two. So these are already too big. Adding two pi would make them even bigger. So we wind up with a single solution. We'll multiply both sides by four. Point one four three three. Point five seven three two.
And I mean, you can do the same sort of thing. I, I don't know if there's any problems in the homework and I won't go through all of the details, but if you had like the sign of X minus three equals something, then you would do the same sort of thing, except instead of multiplying or dividing, you would subtract. So you'd be looking for values between well, I was going to get a decimal, but I'm out of room. So you would be looking for values in this interval. So the sort of key to problems like this is that although you're given an interval in terms of x, you're not going to solve for X until the very end. So what you need to do is you need to look at whatever you have inside parentheses. And instead of looking at the interval you were initially given for X, you look at the interval for whatever's inside the parentheses. Um, or in this case, you might have, um, so in the previous case, you see when we had this plus or minus, in the previous case, zero was our minimum. So we didn't include any of the minuses. Here we might have some of the minuses because zero is no longer our minimum. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Well, then you can attempt the homework and, and see if, if that continues to be true. And if 